Hello and welcome to Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. I am Elvis, your host, and I'm here to let you know that this is a not safe for work podcast. We are teachers at the end of our ropes and really the end of our weeks, and we'd like to be able to talk honestly and openly about education without having to worry about losing our job. So we'll be using pseudonyms throughout the podcast, hence the Elvis. Today, I want to thank all of my Patreon patrons out there. That's right, we have a Patreon. For as little as $5 a month, you get access to all kinds of bonus features extra audio content, interviews with the host, and a special Facebook group. It is pretty awesome. And all you have to do is go to Patreon and look up Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. And when you do that, you get your name read like some of these beautiful people. Let's start with M. Lozier, Justin M., Jessica C., Inga, Kaylee, Terry J., Tracy B., Miss Wonderstats, Quentin P., Mistress Mischief, Natasha S., Miss Anthropy, Princess Buttercup, Dragon Lady, Helena C., Aaron B., Stephanie S., Texas Teacher Kristen, James Nally J., Samantha D., Lisa C, Rachel, Jen Genie, Exhaust a Band Director, Jessica A, Swift Lab Owners, Amanda F, Arion L, Physics Runner, Steph, Michael M, Aldrich T, La Scorpionita, Britt M, Teresa H, Biker Teach, Christina B, Jason F, Abby B, Sarah B, Regina N, Josie S, Sam B, Mary E, Kristen W, Vanessa J, Mary C, RJR, Johanna H, Irma A, Nimi, and Sarah N. A huge thank you to all of them. Woohoo! I'd also like to thank all of our sponsors at Lud Lamb Dramatics. If you are a theater teacher or no one in your building, send them to ludlambdramatics.com. They have all kinds of resources for the theater teacher, stuff that can help make you a more effective teacher. So go to Lud Lamb Dramatics and check out all of their resources. And, um, yeah, so my friends, I, I am just now completing my winter break. Uh, New Year's Eve was just a day or two ago. I got to meet like four days ago with Shirley Temper. She was in town. We got to record this. And you'll hear more about that in the episode. But I feel like this year things are coming together. We got the audio under control. It doesn't sound all crappy like a lot of our last ones. We've got a plan. I I think this is going to be the year. I'm, I'm, I, maybe I'm jinxing it. Maybe I say that every year. Let me rephrase it. I think this year's going to be better than last year. I think that's a shoe because last year fucking sucked. All right, my friends, enjoy this. Cheer! Balls, 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 balls. Balls, 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 balls. 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 That's as good as it's going to be. All right. Well, welcome to Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. I am Elvis, your host. And today, oh, my friends, you are in for a treat. Mm -hmm. I am joined by the long-lost Shirley Temper. I have a complete and utter fear of ugliness. (laughs) <laughs> it's Saltburn. It's Saltburn. Have you watched Saltburn yet? Okay, so I've started Saltburn. I'm interested in it. However, I've seen the TikToks of I like, know. this is us going into Saltburn. I know. And it's, this is us leaving. Everyone's just kind no, of staring blankly I mean, out windows. I haven't finished it, but I haven't gotten to the like, ooh, parts yet. So it may, it may be too much for me. I don't know, but I love Promising Young Woman. So same director. I'm going to give it the try. Well, I got nothing else going on, so I'm going to watch Saltburn as well. Because right now, it is actually kind of the dead zone. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is the time between Christmas and New Year's when we're recording this. It's one of the reasons I was able to get Shirley up here to record with us. And I just, I am unstuck in time. My house is mostly clean. It's a bit cluttered, but it's clean. My office is a fucking disaster. I was going to be like, I'm going to clean up my office this break. Psych. But, you know, I've had these, like, feelings and things going on because it's the holidays and while a lot of the holidays is great i've had a lot of crap shit happen over the holidays and it's that time of year and so there's just well i don't want to say i'm reminiscing there's just a lot of processing (laughs) going on like where am i now compared to what i was doing last year huh there was some weird shit going on and it fucks with your head and so i have great distractions like recording a podcast with shirley temper and one of the things i have not done is clean my office because part (laughs) of the reason it's a mess is because i was depressed as fuck and just wanted to put stuff in and not deal with it and now i gotta deal with it just like i gotta deal with well this isn't fun at all my god (laughs) yeah well there's weed there's beer we got to have burgers earlier thank you patrons our patrons who paid for shirley and i to go have beer burgers so yeah 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 it's been amazing so Let's just start at the beginning. Shirley, we're going to record a special episode with you that's going to be on the Patreon of you just catching up what's been going on with you for the last, like, six months since we last talked. Fantastic. And so we'll save, like, a lot of the stories. But overall, in a nutshell, right now, how are you doing? Well, 
Christmas is not my favorite time of year. I am a mom. And um, while I love Mr. Temper very much, his forte is not organization and long-term thinking and planning. Uh, and so I, I'm the Christmas present shopper for us and for everyone. And I'm the Christmas wrapper. I believe my presents were wrapped Christmas Eve by 3 p.m., just my presents. So, if I, you know, it's one of those things where if I don't do it, it's just, who knows? And, you know, doing everything I can. My little one is still an elf on the shelf Santa believer. I want her to have that journey. And it just, it means decorating. It means cleaning. It means baking cookies for Santa. It means thinking about white elephant for extended family and cooking Christmas dinner. And so for the last two days, I have curled up in my bed and rewatched Mad Men, and it has been <laughs> so great. And then I got to take a little day trip, and now I'm here. Yay! Yay! I'm glad you are here. It's a good time. So we're going to get started with our first prompt today, which is from the Reddits. Reddits. So this is a whoo. This is a story. Is it a is it a story? Well. <laughs> It's about, well, I'll just read this. It's kind of hard for me to describe it. So we're just going to go in. This is from the Detroit News, serving Michigan since 1873. And this was published on December 26 by the author Kara Berg. And the title is Lawsuit. Wayne State discriminated against student who wanted to be gym teacher because of weight. Now, that's a big word salad. It's hard to get the meat of what happened. But let me read the article, and I think you'll figure it out. Okay. A former Wayne State University student who wanted to become a teacher is suing the university for $1 million, alleging he was discriminated against because of his weight and disabilities when he wasn't allowed to do his student teaching virtually. So uh, mm, this is okay. a student who has you know weight disabilities, and he has doctor's notes saying that he should be allowed to virtually student teach PE. <laughs> anyway, David Lopez, forty-four, was a student in the phys, phys ed kinesiology program, aiming to become a gym teacher. He finished every requirement for the program except for student teaching. Lopez weighs over 400 pounds and has diabetes, hypertension, and asthma, according to the civil lawsuit filed earlier. They don't think I fit the description of what a PE teacher was because I'm very overweight, Lopez said. They didn't want me to graduate with my certification because I didn't fit what they perceived to be a gym teacher because of my size and because of my weight. There's no doubt that was the reason why. There was no other reason I passed everything. In the court, sorry, the computer thing screwed up. In the court filing response to Lopez's lawsuit, Wayne State says there is no legal claim for weight discrimination against an educational institution. The university said it also does not control the student teaching requirement of districts. (laughs) The university called Lopez's lawsuit frivolous and asked for it to be dismissed. Lopez was assigned to Dearborn Public Schools for his student teaching in winter 2022, and his doctor gave him an accommodation letter because of his diabetes, obesity, hypertension, asthma. It indicated he could not stand or walk for prolonged periods of time during his student teaching. Dearborn indicated it would allow him to student teach in a virtual physical education program, but Wayne State would not allow it, according to the lawsuit. All I asked was for accommodations, virtual or through physical accommodations, inside a classroom. The school I was at was willing to give me a virtual setting, but Wayne State was not. Though his accommodations were never approved by Wayne State, he said he completed the first part of his student teaching at a Dearborn Elementary School with the help of a gym teacher and some unofficial accommodations. Wayne State told him not to report for the second half of student teaching the secondary education class. And I think we've pretty much got this. Oh, honey. So... It also adds in here, one of his professors had previously tried to get him to leave the university with a degree, but no teaching certificate. He said the professor told him he didn't think he was qualified to be a gym teacher and he wouldn't be good at it. While he isn't able to physically participate in some sports and activities, Lopez says his weight does not impact his ability to be a good teacher. He loves sports, especially team sports, and a coach in high school and enjoyed it. Mm. Oh, okay. So this is tough. On a couple of levels. Yeah. Number one, it's because of size. And but is it? It's, it's not. Here's the thing is, I don't 
really think that phys ed can best be t- taught no, virtually. No, you can't. It's and just, I, yeah. I feel like especially the second half of student teaching, you really need to be in the room mm-hmm. to experience teaching discipline and what happens when you kind of bomb at discipline, mm-hmm. when you're struggling as a student teacher. I feel like these are all lessons that you learn and it makes you a better teacher. And I feel like if you're just sitting in a room far, far away, going through a screen, and it's hard enough to get attention already of kids in gym. Like you hear why coaches have whistles to cut through all the noise and the sweat and the focus. If they're just on a monitor, I I see lots of practical reasons. And while I feel like a virtual teaching assignment is not out of the question for a student teacher, I feel like for PE and I feel like the high school PE coaches and everyone agree, this is not the setting for it. It's not working. Uh, Shirley, what are you, give some basic thoughts on this. That guy is ridiculous. You can't be a student teacher virtually teaching PE. (laughs) It makes no sense. But what's crazy is I'm sure we have listeners somewhere in the U.S. who had to do virtual PE. I mean, I had to teach virtual drama classes, and that was nuts. That's nuts. And if it were, if we were back all online, all virtual, well, then yeah. But that's not now. Yeah, I, it, I don't feel like that's the experience. I don't want to bag on this person because I don't, don't, don't know, know him. him. And I don't want to discriminate or make easy jokes because they're a person of size. Yeah, like, because I mean, it happens, and I've known plenty of teachers of size. Sure. They were able to make it work. However, and honestly, some of the biggest teachers I ever met were high school PE coaches. Sure. But they weren't but trying they were to teach still, virtually. They were yeah. still there. And they were still... I imagine mm. freshman or sophomore PE, the kids like, okay, we're going to play volleyball now, or we're going to play kickball, or one of the games that you do. Once the kids start playing or get with the ball, they're not going to listen to them at all. And another huge part of PE is there's a lot of fights. You yes. have to get in there. Yes. Sometimes you have to physic. You don't want to touch the kid and say, hey, you need to lift your elbow up. Or this is how you pitch the ball and you demonstrate. If you're just sitting in a screen, I don't think you can do it. Yeah, I don't have any sympathy for that guy. And I, I'm all for everyone changing careers and getting a new lease on life. And 44, if you want to be a teacher and you're making a go of it now, Good for you. Go for it. Please, however, by all means. However, if your job has specific requirements like being there in person, then yeah. them's the breaks, kid. You you might need to find a different program. I, I'm sorry. Most of the time I'm kind of like, man, they screwed you over. I feel like they did the best they could because here's yeah. the thing. The schools want more teachers. The colleges want more teachers. They really do want you to have that certificate. They're not just going to say no to be a dick. It's like, hey... I really want to teach, but I get drunk at 10. So, <laughs> you know, can we find some? I, I have documentation. That's can right. Can I have, you know, notifications? Can I just teach virtually from the bar or something? And they'll be like, no, no. sir. We don't feel this is a good fit for you. Have a nice day. Yeah. I do feel a million dollar lawsuit is frivolous That's because so you silly. can't. He's not going to win that. I don't know. There's I'm curious. No it's recent. It's like right now because. They told him, hey, don't come back for the second semester. And it's December now. Like, oh, well, I'll sue you. I wonder if he's hoping they'll just give him the certificate and he'll go away. I don't know. know. I'm curious if he'll get a job. No disc. Well, I'd say that. Virtual positions right now for a lot of schools are gold. Not for everyone, but there are some teachers who prefer to teach virtually. They don't want to be in the room. They want to have that. (laughs) And there's nothing wrong with that. I support them and they want to be able to teach virtually. I feel like it's the point where the people who do it are, you know, they're going above and beyond because they don't want to lose this job because they know there are a lot of people who would kill for a virtual job and then not have to be in the classroom. Yeah. I I just feel like this guy's setting himself up for failure. I don't think he's going to have a lot of good luck with this, but you know what, man? Maybe you'll win. Hopefully you didn't spend too much on that lawyer, but oof, best of luck. Yeah. Mm, I don't like it. I don't like it. All right. Hey, Shirley. What's that? Guess what? Tell me. We have a Patreon! 
and Slatternly Jade. That's right. Teacher Needs a Drink podcast has a Patreon, and it is lovely. For as little as $5 a month, you can go to Patreon and hear over 100 unreleased pieces of audio content, episodes, interviews, all kinds of stuff that you can't find on the normal feed. Including more of me. Including more of Shirley. There's a lot more of Shirley on there. You see pictures of her feet. Shut up. Feet pics, (laughs) y'all. (laughs) <laughs> and some of them, the toenails are different colors. Oh, my God. No spoilers, but, I mean, I'm not oh a feet guy. God. I personally think they look like trolls. But <laughs> for some of you out there, this could be your thing. Sign up for Patreon now. <laughs> All right. Do it now. Woo-hoo! Yay! <laughs> All right. Gross. So – I think a lot of you, it's kind of hard to ignore Marvel at this point. Uh, like why Marvel would you movies, want to ignore Marvel. Marvel? I don't care what anybody says. I love it. I like the Marvel's movie, but a lot of it's it, okay. it's, it's uneven. And, but you know what? I think the fire's dying down. It was Shut something Shut your dark. mouth. Okay. Anyway, for those of you who are familiar with Marvel, you'll know that Stan Lee, who was the creator of a lot of the Marvel characters, or at least 50%, uh, made appearances and cameos in every single the movie or every single one of the movies and as he was getting older in life they knew hey we're not going to have this guy around he might not be here in a year or two they went ahead and pre-recorded a whole bunch of stanley cameos so that you know what we can still have him pop up and say a sentence here he'll be in avengers he'll be in the new miles morales movie i didn't see him in the marvels though he well i I think they stopped i think once he passed away i think the last one was Across the Spider Verse, I think he's in there for a second, or okay. it might have been Endgame. But one of those last two, he has like a. Yeah. Anyway, we are doing that now. Since I can't get <laughs> Shirley Temper to come up to Dallas that often, no. I am creating an audio log of her asking a whole bunch of would you rather questions that I'm going to be using. Well, at least for the next six months or so. So we'll at least have an appearance by Shirley that whoever the guest hosts are that week. We'll get to hear and respond to her. So we're going to start now. Shirley, here is the card deck. Okay. Some cards are balanced. Some are not. Pull out two, and uh, we'll just do ours right now, and I'll record your special stuff later. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Would you rather lick anything before you touch it or find a real unicorn by accidentally running over it with your SUV? So, oh no! <laughs> I either have to lick anything I'm gonna touch, or I have to kill the only unicorn I'm ever going to see with my car. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, I'm gonna lick it. I'm gonna lick it. So I, I could go. I feel like if Bunny was here, the loophole would be she would wear gloves. And so there's very few things that she's actually going to touch. Okay. And I guess that's that. It's th- a cop out. Answer the question. <sighs> This is really hard. I, I don't really want to lick everything. I've done wants a really everything. good job with my immune system this last year. <laughs> and a lot of that's just not touching a lot of stuff. But not everything I wanted but to. But a unicorn. Well, I, What if you run over it and it, it's okay? Like it bounces back. <laughs> that's a cop out. It's uh, not. I feel like just for like... Single dad here, I got to provide for my family. If I don't work, I don't get money. If I'm licking everything, I'm going to be sick. I'm going to have norovirus left <laughs> and right. It's just going to be bad. So that unicorn, it's going to die. No, it's I'm not. So, I'm sorry, I'm, friends. It's going to get clipped by my SUV. I'm going to lick everything before I touch it. <laughs> but I just won't touch anything ever. Maybe my thing is I just won't drive an SUV. I just won't. Yeah, there you go. I just won't ever touch anything well, <laughs> the end. I use chopsticks to like feed myself so that I'm not making contact with anybody. I can't do that to a unicorn. Oh, that's a shame. <sighs> All right. Well, we've got another minute. Let's get in the habit. Shirley, give me one more. Okay. One more just All for right. these fine people and we'll cut this episode. Ooh. What you got? Would you rather live in the Grand Theft Auto world as an innocent citizen or accidentally blow up the moon whoops <laughs> wait so i'm in grand theft auto as an npc <laughs> or we blow up the moon will that fix your girl's periods if we don't got one of them moons anymore <laughs> i Baking hear on their your blood uterus? attracts bears it attracts bears 
Her menstruation's attaching the vagina. You hear that, Ron? Bears. Bears. So you to be putting the whole station at risk. Oh. Uh, I, I feel like... Uh, yeah. You gotta nuke the moon? No. no. No, that's not the way? No. Shirley, give me some explanation. What's your choice? I don't know anything about Grand Theft Autos, so I'll just be an NPC and get run over by a car. I yeah. mean, I'd rather do that than be like, you know... I hear they treat the man. prostitutes very well in Grand Theft Auto. Oh, well, at least she'll have a job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll make some money out there. I called you a prostitute. I am such a whore. Such a whore. Such a whore. <laughs> All right, friends. Well, thanks for listening to another episode of Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. I look forward to this whole new year. Everyone out there, have a safe New Year's Eve. And, uh, well, actually, this will come out after New Year's Eve. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. Bum, I hope bum, everyone bum. had a great New Year's Eve. I'm going to be chaperoning a party because I'm going to let my teenager have friends over. And so I'm going to hide and <laughs> smoke weed in my bedroom. Oh, like a mature Lord. adult. Oh, Lord. All right. All right, friends, everyone out there, thank you so much. Shirley, thank you for being here. I'm so happy I got to make the drive. Me too. And all of you out there, make sure you're taking care of your mental health. Um, counseling, better help. A lot of these things are covered by your uh, insurance. So look into Absolutely. it and see what you can do. It's so worth it to take care of yourself. You'd be surprised. All right, everyone out there, deep breaths, deep drinks. Cheers! All right, folks, thanks for listening to another episode of Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. I'd like to thank my host, Shirley Temper, who has managed to come up to Dallas and record with us today. She's going to be featured in a lot of the new upcoming episodes that are coming out this spring. We have lots of hosts coming. It's just been great. I survived New Year's. This is coming out tomorrow. And I sat there and I was having New Year's Day and I was hanging with some friends and I was like, this is a much better experience. And what I've had in a while. I think this is considered a win. So, you know, progress, man. Progress. All right, friends. I hope everyone out there take care of yourselves. Take care of mental health. I know it's tricky going back into the school after a winter break, but you can do this. I believe in you. And have a great summer. Spring. Fuck. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I'm tired. Cheers, my friends. <laughs>